Support the production of original content that explores Kamai America. Support Comerican's funding drive to become a registered company based in Long Beach, California. Watch our video at Indiegogo.com or go to Comerican.com for more information. I'm Will Koenig, author of At Home on the Mekong. I'm here today to talk to J.P. Nian, an artist who has a show coming up. So I guess the first question is, uh, who are you and why are you an artist? <laughs> so my, my name is J.P. Nian. Um, I grew up in, and I was raised in Stockton, and I lived in Sacramento for about six years, and now I'm residing in the Bay Area in Walnut Creek. Um, for me, I became an artist. It wasn't by um, a conscious choice. I don't believe. I think when I was younger, I always had a constant need to kind of create things, but not knowing that it would lead me to a path of um, where I would be now. I feel like for me to be an artist isn't something I would claim title to unless I really genuinely knew what it really meant personally for myself. And I think when um, that came about, um, you know, years back, I think that's what hit me and, um, the best way I could explain it is that, you know, it's something that you have a passion of yours that makes you kind of fall in love with life again. And that's why I still do what I do, because it kind of gives me that, that light to kind of continue on and enjoy life in, um, in a really different perspective in my own way. What is it like to show your work? Um, well, this is my first show at this particular gallery. Um, I had shows um, in other pre previous places, but I took a, about a year break so I can kind of pursue a creative education. Um, this particular gallery I'm excited for just because um, it's just a two-woman show. I have, I've had a lot of group shows before, and I've only had, um, I think at the beginning of my career, I had my first solo show at school, so that was pretty exciting. Um, but it's, it's really nice just because it's a really full body of work that I feel really strongly for as far as the story that I can tell. What meaning does your work have for the Cambodian American community? My work stems a lot off of struggle and a lot of um, sense of, um, how would you say, a lot is based off of that and um, oppression for me. I think it's a stem of um, trying to be accepted a lot of these times and I you know I'm growing up Cambodian with my dad being Cambodian in the community you know it wasn't as accepting in certain things not particularly art but as far as your ways your lifestyle and I feel like it's such a huge pressure to be put on even at any age you know and a lot of my work I feel like it stems off of that growth and trying to understand that emotion rather than pushing it off as a negative so I would for me I would have a sense of if I can feel the raw emotion of having something that's um, of struggle or stress, I would imagine my mind that would be a tangible object and I could put in my hands. And if I can feel the weight of that, I would shape it in the um, visual forms that I would create. And I feel like that's a connection I would have with community because a lot of that stemmed off of my, uh, my childhood growing up. Well, let's take a look at some of your work. Well, I'm looking at uh, Johnny Seed. Oh, <laughs> that's a perfect one. <laughs> um, so that one was um, a piece I did for the Hotel the Arts, um, the previous show I had before this one. And that was based on childhood nostalgia. And Johnny Seed is titled after my older brother and my only brother. And we grew up in, um, in the ghettos in Stockton. And what it was is that the only time we would have to chance to kind of share our um, time together would be in the backyard. And so my brother's name is Johnny, and we used to call him Johnny Appleseed based off the, um, the childhood story. And there would be times where we'd dig in our backyards, um, cause my dad would have all these plants, these apples and plum trees, which are really common for a lot of Cambodian families. We would tear them down, we would take my dad's machete knife that he would cut with the weeds, and um, we just cause mayhem and do all these weird things in the backyard. And that piece is a sense of a memory that I wish to kind of always to kind of refer to as much as I can. So it's like a way for me to kind of dispense all those good times and all these unusual times where, you know, our dad would reprimand us for doing all these certain things as a child. 
How about uh, Turn to Stone? Oh. <laughs> that seems dramatic. Yes. So that is the only piece I have um, or had that is blue. Um, for certain reasons, it's because um, a lot of my pieces are more geared towards a warmer color, a, a red hue to that. For that piece, Turn to Stone was a moment in um, my life where I experienced um, something really out of my reach as far as uh, a mental capacity for. And I felt that if for that moment, I can imagine that, that moment before that happened. I can just turn a stone and just solidify that moment of glee. You know, that's what my rep representation would be before that would have happened. And even if I would to immobilize my life in that second, so I wouldn't feel that pain, that's what I would go for. Is that a mural from your upcoming gallery? Uh, that was from a past gallery I had. That was the first gallery I've ever had my work in in San Francisco. Um, it's that place is really near and dear to me, and the creator, he, the curator there, is um, very, very kind. And he, I think, the first time I was there, you know, I was just doing a, sh a group show with, oh my gosh, fifty people, but I was excited to just be the one. And um, so I remember staying after um, just to do some insulation because I was living in Sacramento at the time. And he'd offer me to kind of just paint the wall, but um, I kind of just went chaotic. And then I think sh after that, I kept doing shows there. And then I started to just have murals in the wall as a staple when I would go in there and just do work. All right. So you'll have murals similar to this at your, um, your current show? I really, really wish I could. Um, this particular gallery, not so much, just because um, it's a little bit different as far as repainting the walls. But um, in future shows, yes. What advice do you have for aspiring Cambodian American artists? Uh, to put this in words so it won't sound extremely cliche, um, I would really say to always pursue your curiosity. You know, I feel like for me growing up, it was a lot of the pressures of going into a professional um, career was ideal for me. And all the things that would have to do with art or music or anything of that kind, you know, any medium, you know, to just pursue it. If you think that you like it and you're, you think you're going to be good at it, you know, don't think about what you can create out of it as far as a job, uh, you know, what income you get out of it. Because that's not what inspires me, is not money. So I think if for the future younger artists who are coming up and want to pursue this, you know, just just keep going without having that sense in mind, but to just have a really genuine love for what you could do. You know, it can turn into a love, it can turn into a passion, but you know, you'll never know unless you try to pursue it. You have a reception coming up for your show. When and where is it? Sure. So it's going to be at 614 um, Alabama Street in San Francisco at Amy's Gallery at 630. Um, so it's free for the public, so you're more than welcome to bring your friends, your family, dogs, if you have cats, weird animals, whatever you have, um, feel free to come by. It's an open event for everybody. If people want to find out more information about you and your work, where should they go? So um, I have my personal email, I'm not email, my personal website. Um, it's jpneang, N-E-A-N-G dot com. Or you can also add me on Facebook, which is just JP space N E A N G. I'm more than welcome to become anybody's friend. Fairly friendly. <laughs> if anybody's around the San Francisco area, you're more than welcome to visit me at the Children's Creativity Museum in San Francisco. I'm one of the interning educators there in their program. So stop by and yeah, I can show you around. That's all for this podcast. If you'd like to learn more about my experiences in Cambodia, grab a copy of my book at Home on the Mekong on Amazon. For the latest news on the Cambodian American community, go to Comerican.com. Theme music courtesy of Bochan Hui. For more information, go to Bochanmusic.com. <laughs>